every year right after the aws premiers conference reinvent whenever you log into your aws account more often than not you find new services or new features or new options that is what happened today when i logged in to check a couple of s3 things in my aws account i was surprised to see this new option of directory buckets now i'll be honest i really didn't notice it before so if it is already there even before reinvent uh, then it's my fault but i think this is a new stuff uh, where you can create not only the general purpose buckets but also the directory buckets now what is a directory bucket let's check it out when you click on create bucket then you are presented with this screen now again this seems like an addition to the general purpose one but in this one we have just selected this directory option instead of the general purpose one the difference between these two seems to be that directory buckets are only recommended when your application need very very low latency because these buckets they use only the s3 express one storage class if you don't know what s3 express one storage class is then it is simply used when you need faster and agile performance of data within a single availability zone and this is where you can read more about it and i'll drop the link in video's description so primarily what happens is that this express one zone is reside uh, resided in only one availability zone which is a primarily one or more data center physically located in a geographical region and it has been purpose built to deliver consistent single digit millisecond data access for your most frequently accessed data and latency sensitive application so one use case i could quickly think of is some sort of elastic map reduce or any data lake where we have um, a set of data which is very uh, which we sometimes call hot zone or hot block which is required by the application where rest of the lake remains dormant so what we can do we can put that hot data in this directory bucket and from there it could be accessed quickly and easily um, in a very very low latency way and with this s3 express one zone you can select a specific aws availability zone within a region as i mentioned earlier and you can also choose to co-locate your storage with your compute resources in the same availability zone because when you provision an ec2 instance for example or a lambda you can deploy it in a az or availability zone so you can also then deploy the bucket in the same zone to make sure that there is no lit network latency in between your bucket and your um, compute so this s3 directory bucket it supports hundreds of thousands of requests per second and then uh, you can use a lot of other stuff with this s3 bucket like sage maker training athena emr glue data data log and a lot of other stuff sometimes you can integrate it with your lambdas which are already serverless function and require low latency so it could really help in improving the response time of your application and once you select the directory you can maybe select your region maybe let me go with sydney ap southeast 2 where i am and then you can give your bucket name now this is the fun part as soon as you selected the apac region you can see that uh, directory option is gone because that feature is not available there so let's go back to us east one and directory new is available there similarly you can just give it your let's select directory select your az there and then us east one and but wherever you are just select your closest one or where your compute is and then um, one thing very important that because it is residing only in one az so you have to acknowledge that in the event of any AZ outage, your data might be unavailable or even lost. So I would suggest that you prepare for full data loss. So you have to balance out between your low latency and your availability. So, but as a workaround, what you can do, um, you can put your data in this low latency one, but keep backing it up with some sort of S3 replication and then you just need to give your bucket name define your acls for bucket ownership whether you want to block the public access or not and server side encryption which is the usual for s3 uh, general purpose one so the only difference is between where exactly your bucket is located 
So that's it guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or thoughts, let me know and I'll be happy to answer. And if you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much.